as I said earlier, <laughs> we are so blessed. You know, there's people that we see in our world that without limbs, they're born without speech, they're born without sight or hearing. We are really, truly blessed that we have all of get up this morning and worship God another day. Amen? Amen. I never want to get to the point where my pride gets in front of me being humble enough to say that this is your day, Lord. I want you to live through me. I don't want to live through myself because I know how selfishness is. I know what selfishness gets me. I know that when I live my day for myself, I know where I'm at and how that ends, and it doesn't end well, amen? Amen. But I know that if I get up in the morning, start right, get in the Word, and I ask God, please, direct my steps, direct my speech, because I want to tell you, my speech isn't good without Him. My lifestyle isn't good without Him. And I can conquer nothing without Him, but With Him, all things are possible. God has placed a plan and a purpose in each and every one of our lives, and it can be fulfilled in Him. If your dream is something that you can accomplish on your own, it's not really... Right? Do we really need Him if we can do it on our own? But I think God has placed dreams and passions and desires in our heart. And then he wants to give us the desires of our heart because he already put those desires in us. God is so good. God is so good. I want to bless the word this morning. Father, as I preach the word today, God, I ask you, Lord, that these words would be yours and not mine. That no selfishness, would be involved, God, but you would speak through me, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So turn your Bibles or your phones to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and 20, and the second verse I'm going to use is Matthew chapter 9, 35 through 38. I'm just, I'm just going to call this message called because we're all called by God. If we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, we've been called to certain things. Now, a calling, like going to the missions field, everyone's not called to go to the missions field. Everyone's not called to be a pastor. Everyone's not called to be a teacher. But everyone is called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone is called to live through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Allow Jesus to be betrayed through our lives and our speech and our actions, our lifestyles. We are called to be Jesus to, to people that don't know Jesus. And how many of you know that it's a big difference of someone in America that calls himself a Christian and someone who's truly a disciple? who's truly a follower, who's truly a student of the word, who's truly going after God. A Christ follower is someone who doesn't just say it, but their actions, their lifestyle displays it. Amen? So Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So God has called us to go. Another verse in the Bible says, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the four corners of the earth. Let's translate that in Canton or whatever your hometown is, that's our Jerusalem. So we're called to go make disciples in our Jerusalem, in our hometowns, in our communities, and inside the building and outside the building. Amen? I have a real heart, a real heart for evangelism. I want to see people that are completely lost 
that are in the pit cry out to Jesus and watch Jesus rescue them from the hell that they're in. I have a true passion for that. I want to also see those, those people that are coming out of that pit who are, are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I want to see them grow in the Lord. I want to see them see their full potential because so many believers in America and other places I've been, they see potential, but they never reach it because they never really dig into it. They never really understand that if you're hungry, you'll be filled. They don't really understand that if you're thirsty, he will quench your thirst. They don't really understand that God is a daily thing, not just a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night thing, right? Because the Bible says that we are filled with his word, right? The bread of life. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If we physically eat once or twice a week, we wouldn't be very, we wouldn't be very physically healthy, would we? It's the same thing with the word of the Lord. If we just get it on Sundays or we just get it on Wednesdays, we're not going to be a healthy believer. It says, go baptize in them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're, we have five more teenagers that are signed up for water baptism next month. And that will make about 30 teenagers and kids that would be water baptized in the last eight months. God is doing something awesome. I think that making disciples is very important, but more important is we need to make disciples that make disciples. We want to reproduce, but we want them to reproduce. Amen. We don't want addition. We want multiplication in our church. Amen. We want people that know that they love Jesus and they know that they have to share it. And they can't help but share it because God has blessed them so much. Amen. So we want to make disciples that make disciples. Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers to the harvest field. Numbers are important to God. I just want to remind you that there is a book in the Bible, and its name is Numbers. So numbers are important to God, not, just, not for people in pews or seats, but every number represents a heart, a soul. Amen? Amen? Body, soul, and spirit. We need to realize that every hand we shake has a heart behind it. Amen? Every person we talk to has a soul. Numbers matter for the kingdom of God because we want to take as many people as we can with us. Amen? Ignite youth are reaching Canton and the surrounding communities. I just want to read a list of people or, or uh, of teenagers that come to Ignite Youth in different communities. So we understand that Canton, right? But we also have Norris, Farmington, St. David, Dufferline, Luston, Cuba, Elmwood. That's, that's pretty close, right? Then we have Marietta, Liverpool, but get this. We also have Hannah City, London Mills, Astoria, Ellisville, and Browning. Amen. Browning. Amen? Amen? That's God. Amen. We're reaching central Illinois with the gospel because people see that something is going on somewhere. They want to be a part of it. People, I want, to, I want to tell you that people are attracted to the word of God and they're attracted to the presence of God when something exciting is happening. God is doing something exciting at Canton Assembly. Amen? Amen. God is doing something exciting at Canton Assembly. Amen? Amen. Amen. As I said, there's five more teenagers signed up for water baptism. But last Wednesday, a student came to Brandy and I. I shared a message. So when we were in, when we were in Tennessee, we went to Little People Wrestling. You know, 
little people wrestling. And it was like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It was so awesome. They put on a great show, right? <laughs> so the message Wednesday was Jacob wrestling with God. <laughs> and when teenagers and people can get a hold of this message, that, you know, if we go through our lives and we go through the motions, we don't really change. But if we get to a point where we say, God, I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me. That desperation moves the heart of God in our lives. That desire and passion moves the heart of God in our lives. It moves his heart. God will transform our lives if we're willing to say, God, I don't want to let go of you until you touch my life. Jacob walked away with a limp and, he ch and it changed his life. He never walked the same. He was never the same. And my illustration was that you will never be the same when you ex experience and encounter God like that. You'll never experience that with going through the motions, not getting plugged in, not getting interested in it. But if you get to a point, whether it's a good time or a bad time in your life, where you just finally say, you know what? I'm tired of going. I'm tired of getting into the crowd and just being like everyone else. I'm tired of just getting in line and being just like everyone else. It's time to do something different. If God has truly called us to be a disciple, then he's called us to be different. Not someone who just fits in, but we need to fit in uniquely the way God wants us to. Amen? We need to fit God's purpose for our lives. Amen? And after the message, a student came to Brandy and myself and she said, how can I grow closer to God? This is a girl that two months ago, she never even wanted to go to church. She was never interested in God. It was not on her radar. Church was not on her radar. She wanted to be left alone, but there's a disciple in our youth ministry, a girl that lives in St. David, and she never stopped witnessing to this girl. She kept telling her about Jesus by their lockers, in the classrooms, in the hallways. She was compassionate enough to say, I think that her knowing Jesus is more important than her own comfort. Check this out. Her friend never stopped asking and telling her about Jesus. So finally, she came two months ago, and the very first time she'd come to Ignite Youth, she invited Christ into her life. Because someone was willing to go the extra mile and care enough to share the love of Jesus with that person. What if she didn't do that? What if she never did that? What if she never did that and she felt like, well, Lord, it's an inconvenience or it's uncomfortable. Sharing the gospel is uncomfortable sometimes because we need to realize that those people sometimes don't want to hear it. But I believe that God will open up doors and open up hearts. And because that girl came to Christ, she went to Momentum. She was one of the 32 kids that went to Momentum Youth Conference with us. She's on fire for God. And she decided, she decided that she wants to get even closer to God. I want to tell you that this actually happens a lot in, in ministry. We've seen this happen a lot, but I want to tell you it never gets old. It brings me to tears every single time because to see someone who's so far from God to be on fire for God, I want to tell you, is an absolute miracle. It's a miracle. We need to realize that God has called us to be miracle workers. Amen. He wants to work miracles through us is what I'm saying. Amen. He wants us to be healing for people. He wants to heal people through us. Amen. He wants us to share that. He wants us to truly be Jesus to people that don't know Jesus. That's it. Christ in us is the hope of glory for these people that are dying and going to hell. We need to realize that there's people around us that need Jesus. They need the encouraging word. Amen. They need someone to say, you know what? 
I want to tell you that you might be going through a bad time, but I want to pray for you. Amen? Turn your neighbor and say, God can use you. So if you haven't noticed, there's puzzle pieces in all the chairs. The message I, I gave to you last time was about everyone is a piece in God's puzzle, right? All of us together make a complete, beautiful picture. So I forgot the puzzle pieces last time, so I wanted to do it this time. But this is how it illustrates. You are a piece, a part of what God is doing in the kingdom of God and in Canton Assembly. Each and every one of you are important. Amen? Amen. There's not one of you that's less important or more important than the person beside you. Amen. It's, in fact, you all are more important than myself. Because you need the recognition, not me. Amen? Because if it wasn't for you, our church wouldn't be built up. Let's just be honest. And I tell the, the youth, I said, this is your youth ministry. They're the ones that are inviting their friends, not me. I mean, I do invite people, but we can't be effective if I'm doing everything. They are actually the evangelists. They are actually the disciples. They're actually what you would call leaders. Amen? I don't believe in the term helpers or workers in the kingdom. I, I, I believe they're leaders. God has called us to be leaders in the kingdom. Amen? We're a disciple. If we're a disciple of Christ, he's called us to be a leader. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter if you're introvert, extrovert, or anything in between. It doesn't matter what your personality is. God has called you to be a leader in the kingdom, and we all have a place. We all have a peace, right? We all have ownership of what God is doing because he lives inside of us. Amen? So no one should feel less important or they just come and they're pew sitters. I want to tell you that God's never called anybody to be just a pew sitter or a chair sitter. Let's just be honest, right? I know I'm the associate pastor, but I still have to say that none of us have been called to just sit on, the, on a chair. That's a, that's a fact. God has called us to go. He's called us to go make disciples wherever we're at. In our household, for one. In our neighborhoods. Amen. Our neighbors. There's people on our block that don't know Jesus, I'm sure. There's people in your life that you go to school with or you work with that do not know Jesus. I want to ask you, who's going to reach them if you don't? Amen, Pastor. Okay, let me show you. How, this, this is what you do. Oh, amen, Pastor. That will preach right there. Amen. So like I said, who are going to reach those people if we don't? Amen. amen? We're called. We are called. You are called. You are a minister. You are a pastor. You are an evangelist. Amen? amen. You are a teacher. Amen. You are a disciple. God has called you to be a disciple. God has not called us to be on the sideline. He's called us to be in the game, being active. Amen? Amen? How effective do you think the Apostle Paul would if he had a cell phone back then? He, read, he, he wrote like two-thirds of the New Testament. How much more effective could he be if he had the Internet? Right? But we have that. God has called us to use our social platforms to reach people for Christ. You know what angers me sometimes? I don't say it out in public or anything, except for right now, I guess. But <laughs> People use social platforms to complain. People use social platforms to basically spill out their political views. As a disciple, we need to more, be more focused on that person's soul and where they're at with Jesus more than what their political view is. Amen? Can we be honest? Those people's souls are more important than us complaining about the restaurant we went to last night. Mm. And I know that you can only do so much, but 
I want to tell you, this is not bragging or anything. I just want to tell you that I just want to reach as many people, and I want our website to reach as many people as possible. When we first came here, I wanted to reach people. Amen? We all do. Our church website, our Canton Assembly, had about 280 followers. So what I did is I went on there and I invited every one of my friends to like Canton Assembly page, their Facebook page. Why? Not because I want to promote myself, not because I want to promote a church, but because I want them to see the verses on their timeline. They might not know Jesus, but they, every time that we post a positive message, every time we post a sermon, every time that we post a positive word, it's going to be on their news post, their Facebook post. Amen? So I've seen over 400 people like Canton Assembly since I've been here. Why? Because there's 400 more people that are going to see the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to invite all of you, if you're on Facebook, to go to invite friends and invite them to like the page Canton Assembly. Why? Because I want to see the gospel all over. I don't know about you, but I have friends that are all over the country. We lived in Oklahoma, Louisiana, and I've traveled uh, coast to coast when I was welding as a combo pipe welder, so I know a lot of people. I want to invite you to invite everybody you know to like Canton Assembly page so they can hear the gospel, so they can hear a positive message, and they can hear about Jesus. Amen? I want to tell you that that's being a missionary too. Amen? Anytime that you give money to a missionary, it's like you're getting that blessing as well. It's like you're going with them. Every time you pray for a, a message, every time you pray for a, 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 a missionary, God sees that. God blesses you. I want to tell you that prayer changes you more than it changes what you're praying for. That's what you need to understand is we are called to pray because cha change happens when we pray. Amen? Amen? Not only does it change us, but it changes the circumstances. It changes the atmosphere. It changes everything because we're saying, God, we're putting this in your hands and we're letting go of it. God is so good, isn't he? You are a piece of Canton Assembly. You are a piece of the kingdom of God. I tell people all the time, because so many, I go to a conference or, or other places and I talk to other believers, they're so focused about their own church. We should be focused about the kingdom of God. I share with a pastor one time, that, you know, it's about the kingdom. We should have uh, small groups in our homes and invite people that are on our block and not even tell them what church we go to. Because that's irrelevant if they don't know Jesus anyway. Yeah. We just want to invite them to have a cookout. We want to invite them to have a meal with us. That's why there are so many what you call dinner churches that are popping up over the nation is because food brings us together. Amen? Amen? Can I hear an amen, brother? <laughs> That's why soon after we started Ignite Youth Ministries, we started, we started Ignite Life Groups, which is our youth ministry in a small group in our home. And sometimes we take that and it turns into four different small groups in different areas of our house. Why? Because it creates community. It creates family. So a lot of times you don't get that on Sunday mornings. I mean, we don't usually eat together on Sunday morning. You get what I'm saying? It's like we get the, the corporate gathering, we worship together, but real true connection happens before and afterwards in the hallway when we have conversations. We connect with God in here, absolutely, and others, but what, what I'm trying to say is the true connections with other people is when we spend time with them. Amen? Amen? So I think it's really exciting to see people out in the hallways talking and staying after church and really communicating with people because that builds relationships and friendships. So Ignite uh, Life Groups was all about that. We'll get together and we'll do crazy stuff. Like one night we had a cereal buffet. And I bought like 20 different kinds of cereals. And kids were like excited about that, right? And my son, Caleb, which I don't know where he is, but... Oh, is he? 
So he's downstairs, yes. Oh, by the way, first through sixth grade, can go downstairs? Anyway, just joking. He got hooked on Captain Crunch like a year ago, right? So he wouldn't want to eat anything except for Captain Crunch. So I, I can like see it, you were like, you know, affecting his body, right? It's like, buddy, I, you need to either have a, a growth spurt or you need to quit eating Captain Crunch. So we had to get him off Captain Crunch. It was like an addiction for him. <laughs> so now that he's been off it for a year, we let him have some more Captain Crunch. But the point is, is that kids got together, we ate together, and that just creates automatic community. It, it, it makes automatic friendships because when you're eating together, it's just something about that, that that fellowship, it just creates conversations. It creates community. It creates, how was your day today? And then you hear some of the kids talking about things that they probably shouldn't talk about and stuff. So we just kind of talk to them about that because we want them to be comfortable enough to open up about whatever's going on in their life, right? Amen. So when they bring up something that's going on in their lives, whether it's appropriate or not, we want to use that as a platform as how God can reach them through that situation in their lives. And I mean, we've had people, <laughs> we've had people that when I've talked about pornography at youth group, we, 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 we've had kids put, throw their phones down at the altar saying, I need help. I need help with this. These are true people. These are true situations and, and, and really big struggles in people's lives. I've seen people that, you know, when I've talked about gossip, they say, you know what? I want God to control my tongue. I said, well, you know what? God gives you the ability to control your own tongue through him. Amen. So that's the most unruly thing in our lives. It's like the smallest part of our body, but it's so unruly. And when you explain to these kids that the tongue is so powerful that there's life and death in the tongue and it matters what you say, they start to realize, you know what? I want my words to be God's words. I want my words to be uplifting because I don't want to curse anybody. I want to bless them. Amen? We need to realize that we are making disciples at Ignite Youth Ministries. We're making disciples at Ignite Junior Kids. We're making disciples at Canton Assembly, amen, of all ages. And my heart is to see people see their full potential. In April, we're going to go to Fine Arts. And, I mean, fine arts is a, uh, a youth platform where uh, teenagers can use their gifts that God has given them. So anything from singing to photography to dance and everything, I'm going to invite all these kids to find something they're passionate about. And I want to encourage them and give them the tools and the ability for that to be developed. Amen. That's true discipleship. True discipleship is to show these kids that even if your parents don't care about you, even if everyone else has turned their back on you, we love you, Jesus loves you, and you always have a friend in Christ. He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, and we love you as well. That's what it's about. That's the kingdom. So here's two things I want to ask you to do. <laughs> Number one, I want you to pray that God will open doors and hearts for you to share Jesus in your everyday life. Pray that God will open doors and hearts for you to share Jesus in your everyday life. There's people in our everyday life that we can impact with the kingdom. Amen? Amen. God's going to show you people that need just an encouraging word. God's going to show you people that are hurting. God's going to show you that people need Jesus. Amen. All he's asked us to do is to be his disciple. He's asked us to be willing. Amen. He just wants us to be available. Amen? And number two, pray that God will show you where you can serve at Canton Assembly whether it's an usher on the platform, not on the platform, whether it's putting salt on the ice, which is very important, by the way. But God has placed 
one of these pieces in your life. I want you to take your piece home with you. I want you to remember that this is you. And without you, the picture is not complete. Without you, can't assembly is not complete. Without you, we are unfinished. You are important. Each and every one of you, I want you to know that you're very, very, very important. Did you hear me say that? Amen. You're very important. Amen? I want to ask you, as Melissa comes forward, I just want to ask you this. What's God speaking to your heart today? What's God speaking to your heart today? I know that before I was on fire for Christ, I know what I would be thinking. I'd be thinking, man, I need to get in the word more. I'd be thinking, man, I need to witness more. Man, I need to do this. Man, it's not about doing, it's about being. A disciple is not something that you can be taught on a piece of paper, in a schoolroom, in a classroom. Being a disciple of Christ is a desire. It's a heart thing. It's not a study thing. Though he does want us to study the word, but that's not all it is because we see a lot of people that study but don't live it out. If your heart's not in it, it's not, it's not going to work. So I just want to ask you, what's God speaking to your heart right now? I want to ask God to put people in your mind. I want God to put faces in your mind of people that you could be Jesus to. I want God to drop names into your heart. I want God to give you divine appointments to where you're at the grocery store or wherever you're at. God's going to put a divine appointment right there. God's going to put someone in your path that needs Jesus. There's going to be someone in your path that needs prayer. There's going to be someone in your path that right there at the grocery store you're going to pray for and they're going to be instantly healed because of the power of God. We just need to start expecting God to move. Because when he asks us to do something, he's already planned it out. When God shows us a vision, he's already planned out the provision. Everything's in place. All we need to do is be obedient. That's really all it is. It's just us saying yes. And we know when we hear God's voice, we know when someone's struggling. The devil's never going to tell you to go pray for somebody who's struggling. We know that, right? But I want to pray that God will absolutely break our hearts, break our hearts in half for people that need him. Do you want that today? It's going to be inconvenient sometimes because when you're in a hurry, it's inconvenient to stop and do something else. It's inconvenient when a server gives us really bad service to give them a tip and then tell them about Jesus. It's inconvenient because our flesh wants to rise up and think, this lady is doing a horrible job and deserves nothing, but I want to give her an extra genuous, extra genuine, generous tip and I want to tell her something positive in her life. I'm going to tell her about Jesus. It's really inconvenient when your neighbor's knocking on the door and they ask you for something again. And all you can think of is they've been to the store a thousand times between this time and the last time they asked me. But you know what? I want to go get it again. And I want to bless them. There was a time when we were pastors in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy. We're, we're going to run into just about everything. I bless this family with groceries, right? So I bring in these two big bags of groceries and two gallons of 2% milk. You know what she said to me? I have growing boys. We need whole milk. I took the time to bless her. And I could have said, well, I'll take the groceries back with me and you can go get your own milk. That's what my flesh wanted to say. What also I wanted to tell her is, you know that whole milk's only 3%, right? Whole milk is not 100%. There's 2% milk and the red cap is only 3%. It's only one more percent. But I didn't say that either. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Next time I'll remember that. <laughs> Next time I'll remember that. It could have been bad, but God made it good. He made a bad situation good because of the decision I made in that moment. So let's bow our hearts before the Lord this morning. Let's ask him to share. What is it? What is it in our lives, Lord?